Hey, what's happening, everyone? Welcome back to another episode review of Beavis and Butthead. So in this episode, we are now on episode 10. And interestingly enough, for as excited as I was when I heard what these episodes were called, I didn't actually look at the premises, but these two episodes are called Hoarders and, uh, what was the second? Needle Dicks. <laughs> Needle, Needle Dicks. Dicks. So, Hoarders, the first episode. This one starts off in a way that didn't fully grab me, which basically how this episode gets going is that we see the boys watching Hoarders at the house, and they, uh, we, we, we soon realize that the reason why they're watching it is because Butthead overheard a girl at their school talking about how much she loves the show Hoarders. So they are watching Hoarders 2, 1, try to, try to get chicks, classic Beavis and Butthead fashion, and 2, as they are watching the show, they uh, start seeing that in the episode, there's a bunch of women going up to this guy who is a hoarder, you know, all the people helping out and shit. And so Butthead has the idea, well, wait a minute. The reason why chicks love love the show is because they love hoarders. Beavis, we need to get a bunch of trash, fill up our house, and have and that that will get us to have girls over. It's that bizarre incident where I understand that they're stupid enough that this is again, it's just classic enough for them to come up with a scheme like this. But what I will say is that we're talking like not even the first minute of the episode. We establish that this episode is gonna go down this route. And I guess for me, I just would have liked more buildup. It felt very just, like, that kind of feeling where, okay, people know Beavis and Butthead. This, we're, let's just get this scored away so that we can go forward with the episode. It just felt a little bit rushed to me. It had everything that we can expect out of Beavis and Butthead getting themselves into as far as really stupid ideas. But it just started so fast and I think it just needed more story, more buildup. But talking about the cutaway, so what I will say is that I liked it in that, like, what I can say about this episode, and more or less both of these episodes, is that they have everything that, personally, I like out of Beavis and Behind episodes, just everything that makes them work, or would make any episode for that matter work, is that the pacing feels funky, the buildup just isn't quite there, and things are just kind of written in a fashion where I feel like it wasn't to the best of my judge's game. So, for example, in this, uh, in this cutaway, uh, what it was is their roasts on this guy. And that's always what grabs me. But even this one, just the whole pacing was very funky. But getting back to the episode, we now see that their house has completely filled up with trash. It's trash that they've collected from the neighborhood that they've stored in their house. And we were kind of talking about this throughout the episode. We were teased in the trailer where we saw a, a scene, a clip, where it shows their skeletons in this whole horde of trash. So I was a little bit disappointed getting through the episode. I was like, wait a minute. Did they really just throw away the ending in the trailer to us now that we know what that episode is? Do we, did they really just throw the episode away? But... I will get to the ending a little bit later on because it does have some prizes, as does the whole episode, actually. But now, being at this part where they've collected all this trash, it actually turns out that they have so much trash that they can't find the front door. They don't know where to go, and they're completely caught up in this trash. And what I, what I want to say is that this actually started out feeling a little bit off to me, where... I didn't fully grasp what the writers were going for with this episode, especially uh, during this this time specifically, but we actually, it's it's kind of ironic because Butthead actually sees it that, okay, we become hoarders, we can get girls over, but ironically, Beavis has actually developed the behaviors of a hoarder. He uh, started saying the exact stuff every hoarder says. <laughs> I, I might want to read these papers someday. I might want to... <laughs> it's just kind of like, oh, God, he's yeah. becoming an actual hoarder. What I loved about it, and this is why I didn't see it coming at first, where I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? Is because it sidewinds you so well, where it's just this stack of fucking newspapers, and out of nowhere, Beavis is just like, hey, hey, watch, watch the newspapers, but hey, you're going to knock him over. And uh, he's even like, knee-deep in this pile of trash where his leg is sticking out, and he's like, oh, wow, what is this, a jar of mayonnaise? 
I should probably not open this. It might be worth something someday. <laughs> so it's just things like that where you you get enough that it's uh, that he's obviously developed the hoarder's behavior. But it was just things where I was like, okay, I feel like they could have gone a little bit further. This could have been a little bit better written. But let's get to the ending of this episode now. So this was kind of like what I was a little bit worried about because we did get the teaser in the trailer about where this episode was going to go. So what I will say is that for someone who kind of knew where this was going to go because the episode was a little bit spoiled, they still threw in enough surprises at the ending where it, it, it wrapped up for what this episode is. I'm not saying that this is the best episode that they've done, but for what this episode was, I think it wrapped up nicely where we actually see that it is now 2033, which I didn't even know that there was, that they were going to go that far. You know, I didn't know that they were going to talk about what time or how long these guys have been there, but yes, it is now 2033. We see a couple of construction workers going in there to kind of scour out the place where we see their skeletons sitting on the couch in their usual spots. And what I want to say about this is that the animation was so top-notch. It's one of those things where you don't, it, it kind of catches you off guard, especially in an episode that may not have felt to the best of what the season has delivered. It's a thing where you can see that they're still putting enough in that they need to. This episode, it's one of those things where I think for what it was, it was fine. And especially for an episode that I was kind of predicting as it went on, you know, it still delivered enough that it could have. And overall, I'm going to give this one a low positive review. I'm going to give it a 5.1. I mean, it was funny, but it wasn't... Um... Yeah, I was kind of... Because uh, we were, we actually watched this with our, uh, with our best friend, and all three of us at the end were like, okay, so it has the stuff, again, that you would expect, and that, you know, you, you like out of Beavis and Butthead, just none of it is near the best that they have delivered. But getting to the uh, next episode now, this is called Needle Dicks. And this is one that I've talked about before that I've really been, been curious to see. And this is the episode where Beavis becomes obsessed with acupuncture. So basically how this episode starts out is that we see the guys at, in school with Van Dreesen. And uh, he's trying to do a parent-teacher conference, which obviously their parents don't fucking show up. But... Van Dreesen ends up recommending acupuncture to the guys, and it's that classic thing, again, like I said in the last episode, it's that classic thing that we all love where they're just going forward and they're saying, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. They're just agreeing to whatever, even though they don't know what the hell he's fucking talking about. So he's recommending acupuncture to them, and they're agreeing to it. And so the next scene, we actually see them getting into the process of acupuncture, and all I'm going to say is Butthead gets what he fucking deserves. <laughs> Fuck that guy. This episode is actually very surprising because it's that turn of events where we haven't quite... Like, it has a lot of things in it that we haven't seen yet. Where Butthead's actually getting the shittier end of the stick in this episode. So, for example, Butthead, we, we see a little bit of it, but a lot of it is in the background where we're hearing him attack doctors and there's a bunch of commotion because obviously they're sticking needles in him and him agreeing to something that he didn't know what the fuck it was. Yeah, it completely, again, fuck you, butthead. You got what you deserved. But we actually are being focused on Beavis, who, for whatever reason, is actually cool with acupuncture. We just see him and we, he just has, he's looking like fucking pinhead, like, like Jacob was saying. And it turns out that it feels so good that he decides... He's just got to keep him in there. And he actually develops this obsession where throughout the episode he's wanting to put more needles in him. And because his energy is so much better that he's actually kind of taking shit out on Butthead even if he's not realizing it. For example, in the cutaway, uh, this was actually the longest cutaway I think that I've ever seen. And goddamn where we threw it through it. This thing never ended, but this cutaway is actually uh, focusing on a... Metal singer, I wouldn't even call him a metal singer. I've heard metal. This guy, we're, we're, we're focusing on this guy screaming, and uh, he's screaming lyrics that sounds to Beavis anyway, like Butthead Sucks. Whoa! Would you hear that? He just sang Butthead Sucks! Uh, he did? Butthead Sucks! 
But it sucks! Damn it. So I'm gonna this, kill this guy. <laughs> and so for like, I shit you not, probably 10 minutes or so, we're just seeing Beavis just obsess over this, you could say. And it's getting under butthead skin, obviously, because him screaming butthead sucks, and butthead's, you know, say, claiming that that's not what it's what's being said. I do want to note that, obviously, with this being a cutaway, he does not have the needles in him. <laughs> but this kind of hints at where... The episode might go. For example, after this cutaway, Beavis is actually saying something where Butthead attempts to do his typical smack to Beavis' face, <laughs> but all I'm gonna say is that with Beavis having needles in him, you don't really know how that's gonna go. It's like, well, first off, Butthead's might be smacking a face full of needles, but then again, Beavis has these needles all over him. So it does things like that where Butthead's not able to do the typ his typical shit, and with Beavis having this newfound energy and this obsession, it goes in that fashion, especially with the ending now, where it's just morbidly what you would expect, where Beavis decides that he wants to feel even better. So he goes to a fabric st store, buys a bunch of bobby pins, and puts them, puts them on him. And... What, one thing that we just kind of had fun with is like, if you notice, if you look really hard enough, you can actually see a fork pinned in fucking <laughs> Beavis's neck. We're just like, what's with the... Okay. It, why not? Because it's fucking Beavis, right? So, how this episode actually turns out is that this actually capitalizes on something that we have not seen actually come into fruition before. Which is a whole part of the episode that is a genuine story point about Beavis attempting to masturbate. So he's all like, getting toward the episode, he's like, you know what would make me feel even better, Butthead and Butthead's like, I swear to God, Beavis, if you say more needles, he goes, spanking my monkey. <laughs> so he goes into the bathroom to attempt to spank his monkey. And all I'm gonna say is that this turns out exactly how you would expect. So overall with the episode, it's one of those things like with the past episode. It's got plenty that it does right and plenty that you would want, but it just doesn't go the full distance with that. But again, for what these episodes were in their own way, I do think that they turned out fine enough. And with this one, I'm also giving it a low positive review. But my rating for it is, um, I'm going to give this episode a 7.1. Yeah, I don't actually know which episode I liked more. I think that this one had more surprises to it, especially considering that the last episode I completely saw the ending coming. But again, none of these episodes were really... Again, they didn't go the full distance to what they could have. But yes, guys, that is going to do it for our review of episode 10. Now we have just a couple episodes left. Uh, make sure that you guys are tuning in, especially for the finale, where we are going to be doing a collaboration with someone that I don't think you guys would want to miss. But yes, guys, with all that being said, we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to let you guys go. I hope that you guys are having a great day. hope you guys enjoyed the review as well as the episodes. In the comments below, let me know what you guys thought of these episodes as always. But yes, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, we hope to see you in the next one. We hope you're having a great day. Take care.